Welcome to Tuesday's edition of Renew. I'm Pastor Tony. Thanks for joining us and let's get right to the point. Again, we're in the third week of a series we've entitled Faith 101. This week we're specifically talking about where our faith originates from and where our faith needs to be focused on. And we can say in our case who it needs to be focused on. Now, I'm going to make a statement that probably is a little foreign to a lot of people's ears and their hearing and their thinking right here. Faith does not come by praying for it, okay? Now, I know a lot of people believe that, that well, if we want more faith, stronger faith, great faith, then we're just going to pray for it. And most of the time, people have the idea in praying for faith, well, if I don't get it, then it's all God's fault. No, the, the reality is you already, as a believer, have a measure of the God kind of faith. You got more than enough to get it done. You actually have the faith of Jesus. The same faith that he had, that he overcame the world with, is the same faith that we have, that we possess today. Now the problem is, is many times our faith is just not focused in the right direction. It's not the fact that we don't have enough faith, or our faith is you know, not, not strong enough or not great enough, it's a, re, it's a fact that we do not, our faith is focused on the wrong thing. We have it focused in the wrong direction. Now, you know, as an illustration, we can say it this way. You know, I have a, a floodlight here. This is a floodlight that would go in a floodlight fixture. Now, the difference between a floodlight and a spotlight. Now, a floodlight is going to take the light and diffuse it and disperse it out into a wide range or a, a large, you know, range of direction. That's good for a backyard, okay? But a spotlight, now we have spotlights in here that are focused on me right now. I have spotlights that are focused more directly. They're not so much a you know, uh, a light that's diffused into a large area, but directly focused in, uh, on me personally. Now, we could even take that a, a degree further than that. You might have a flashlight. That is even more a concentrated focus of light. But then we also have laser beams. Now, this has a laser beam on it. I don't know if you can see it or not. Uh, don't think we can. But this has a laser beam that comes out that could pinpoint a specific thing on a screen or somewhere on a wall somewhere. That is a very concentrated dose of light there. You know, they even use lasers now, laser beams, to cut things out and to do other things with because it is such a highly concentrated, focused light. Now, if you were to get, most of us have done this growing up, we got a, a magnifying glass and we took the sun the sun's light and we concentrated that down in a magnifying glass on something and you get it there long enough and it'll it'll start a fire it'll burn something well that's really what we want to do with our faith we want to take our faith from a floodlight where it's diffused out into scattershot areas into all all kinds of ways that really makes it almost ineffective and non-productive in our life and we want to take that and make it a laser beam. We want to cause our faith to be so focused, concentrated and focused, that it becomes just like a laser beam. It can pinpoint things and get it all concentrated. That's where it becomes powerful in our life. Now, in Romans chapter 10, this is the verse we want to read today. Romans chapter 10 and verse number 17. It says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So notice that our faith needs to be focused on God, but specifically on the Word of God. Now, in uh, literally what this says here in verse number 17, and, and other translations bring this out, it says, so then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the message of Christ. So that even gets even, uh, that tells us even more specifically what our faith needs to be in. It says our faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the message of Christ. So it needs to be focused on the message of Christ. Now, what is the message of Christ? Well, if you look back just a couple of verses to verse number 15, it says it this way, it reads this way, and how shall we preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, 
who bring glad tidings of good things. So the message of Christ is the gospel message, isn't it? It is the gospel message. Romans chapter 1 verse 16 said, Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. So when we believe, when we mix our faith and focus our faith on the gospel message like a laser beam, it releases the power of Christ into our life to do something good, to bring salvation to an area of our life. Now, let's re read back real quick. Just uh, We don't have a whole lot of time, but verse number 6 of Romans 10, it says, But the righteousness of faith speaks in this way, Do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above, or who will descend into the abyss, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. Verse eight that says, but what does it say? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith, which we preach. Now I want you to notice about these verses right here that it equates the word, the word of faith, which we preach with Christ himself. Now the person of Christ is in heaven, but we can we can have just as much of, a, of an effect and draw on the power of God unto salvation, the power of Christ in our life by believing and focusing our faith on the message of Christ, which is the gospel, which is the word of God. See, that's really what our faith needs to be focused on. We say we are considering when we're focusing our faith on Jesus, we're looking unto him, we're actually looking at the word, the message of Christ, the gospel message, which releases the power of salvation, which releases the same power that brought Jesus victory over death, hell, and the grave. Good news right there. Well, that's all the time I've got for today. Join us again tomorrow. Uh, if you'd like additional resources and materials, go to TonyCowan.org. We'll see you tomorrow.